This week on Excelsior Journeys, we are talking with actress, writer, producer Minerva Veer. We talk about her short film, Shevolution, which is already racking up the awards and official selections in various film festivals. It's amazing what can happen when you have a group of people around you that you can trust to bring your vision to life and make the opportunities instead of waiting for them. JLD, please do the honors. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, and you're listening to the Excelsior Journeys with George Soroy. Prepare to ignite. Is there a burning desire within to share your creativity with the rest of the world? Do you insist on pursuing your passion by any means necessary? Then you are on an Excelsior journey, and you are not alone. Welcome back to Excelsior Journeys. This is George Soroy, and thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for being here for almost 80 episodes already. It's been just an amazing ride. I am so thrilled with how the show has been going. And I've been so thrilled with all the feedback that I've gotten from all of you. And if you like what you're hearing, please feel free to share this with as many people as possible, whether they're iPhone users, Android users, whatever. All they have to do is go to he's got it.com slash podcasts, and they'll see all the different platforms where the show is. So that way they can pick and choose where they want to subscribe. Although if you are an Apple user, strongly suggest using uh, the Apple podcast app. And you can even just go ahead and tell Siri to subscribe to the show for you. Uh, all you have to do is just hit the button, say Siri, su- subscribe to Excelsior Journeys on Apple Podcasts, and she'll do it. So with that in mind, if you are like me and you are keeping an eye out for any other projects and everything that you'd like to support, you've probably gone to Kickstarter, you've gone to Indiegogo, you've gone to all the other sort of crowdsourcing sites that are out there. I consider myself a bit of a success story on that because I used Kickstarter to raise the funds for my voice lessons that got me this far. Um, I have also contributed to other projects that are out there. I have contributed to four of Blake Northcott's novels through Kickstarter. I have contributed to Chris Etheridge's short film Survivor Type, one of Stephen King's Dollar Babies that was mentioned last week. And I've also contributed to the project that Uh, that we're going to be talking about this week. When I saw a campaign on Instagram about this short film called Shevolution, I was really intrigued by it. And I was really taken by the actress, writer, the real creative force behind this short film, uh, Minerva Veer. And I wanted to see if I could support this project. And thankfully I was able to do so. I was able to contribute just over $20. And that, wound up being just one part of a whole lot of other support that she has gotten that has resulted in this short film not only becoming a reality, but also becoming an official selection to over 15 different film festivals that are out there right now. And it's already started winning awards as well. Minerva is the perfect example of what happens when you have a whole lot of creative people all working together, knowing each other, trusting each other, and wanting to work on one specific project to get all of their talents out there. That is what Minerva has done with this short film. And it is my privilege to introduce to you, Minerva Veer. Minerva, how are you? I'm great, George. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much for being here. So um, so tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about Shevolution, if you will. Shevolution is currently a short film. Um, There's plans for a feature for it or a TV series, but at the moment, it's a short film. It is about the journey of a broken woman in search Mm -hmm. of recovery. Really? Um, Basically, the story is about Millie Vega. She is a recovering addict alcoholic who marries Mm -hmm. another addict alcoholic who happens to have bipolar disorder. Oh, boy. And um, he relapses 
after mm-hmm. a couple of years of being together, he relapses um, with drugs, alcohol, and his mental illness just blows up and turns into psychosis. Mm-hmm. And um, Millie Vega, the main character, has to make a choice, mm-hmm. um, whether to save the man she loves or to save herself. And how many film festivals has it been uh, has it been accepted in so far? Because it's it seems like um, every time I go on Instagram, I'm seeing like one after another. I'm just like, this is awesome. So how many we got so far? Yeah, we got 17 film festivals. We got wow. into 17 film festivals so far. Um, yeah, and we've won in five. Excellent. We've won in five or six, something like that. Um, we started the whole festival journey at the beginning of this year, mm-hmm. you know, when I was like, okay, so this is ready to put out. It's completely locked. No more changes in sound and picture or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start submitting it to festivals. And, and you know, I, I don't really know. I am the main producer of the mm-hmm. film. So I didn't really know how it was going to get received, considering yeah. it has a very sensitive um, topic. Yeah. So um, I'm very relieved <laughs> that it's being received very well. And um, people seem to be emotionally moved by it. And so far, so good. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. And so um, and so if I'm not mistaken, all the people that have been working with you behind the scenes, they're all people that you've known throughout your life as well. Correct. Um, pretty much like they're my, they're my collaborators in, you know, in the entertainment field here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm really strong in that, you know, I started in this business as, as an actor Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like in the film industry, we're very much like, uh, commodities Mm -hmm. and, um, so I really respect actors and everyone behind the camera, all the crew. I think we are all artists. Oh, yeah. And throughout my career, I've sort of, you know, I was like, oh, that that's the DP I really want to work with right. when I make my film. Or, you know, um, this actor or this director. Like, I've made a list in my nice. head nice. um that's the way to do it i really want to work with and it's usually based on who they are as human beings on their level of compassion <laughs> yep. if they're great wonderful caring human beings plus they're talented in what they do then um then I would work with them. And this has been a dream project with a dream team, with my dream team, you know? Um, yeah, most definitely. So uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a low budget project. Mm-hmm. I, I uh, crowdfunded it through Seed and Spark, which is an independent film crowdfunding uh, platform. Mm-hmm. And um, so we didn't, I didn't, I didn't really have the money for it to right. make the movie, but it, it, you know, I wrote the script because it was part of my healing journey. Um, mm-hmm. The story is autobiographical of a particular period in my life. Mm-hmm. And so I wrote the script since, you know, I'm a screenwriter. So I, I wrote the script kind of like not really thinking about how I'm going to make it or sell it or anything like that. I just sort of made it as like, you know, it was such a difficult part of my life, you know, that I was like, I need something to like make sense. And the only way to make sense for me was to to write it, to write it down in -hmm. script form. And so I did. And and then I I gave it to these people that I trusted the director I wanted to work with, um, mm-hmm. the actors I wanted to work with, and the DP and the editor I wanted to work with. And um, I was very careful about it because it's, you know, it's it's my personal project and I don't want it to get in the wrong hands. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's, it's pretty sensitive for me. For other things, I'm not that sensitive, but mm-hmm. for this one, I am. And yeah. luckily, you know, everybody was got on board and was very supportive 
um, with a project and, and things just kind of like fell into place so easily. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I consider myself very lucky, especially with my collaborators. Yeah. 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 It's it's almost like, it's almost like what, uh, Herb Brooks said, uh, while he was collecting the 1980 U.S. hockey team, just saying, I'm not looking for the best guys. I'm looking for the right ones. And it sounds like what you were doing. Uh, by constantly just making sure to you know take a look at them as not only as what they do but also who they are, and it, it's I totally understand you know the the need to make sure that you're connecting with that with those people, especially with a project as personal as this. Like that's that's definitely something that you need that you everyone needs to do. Everyone needs to take a take a lesson from that. So yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what I like to call the lightning bolt moment. That moment in li- in everyone's life when they see something, hear something, realize something, or just like experience something and just kind of point in that direction and say, that's what I want to do. That's the journey I want to go on. When it comes to filmmaking, acting, everything, in being a part of this wonderful industry, what was it for you? Oh, gosh, I've, I've had several of those throughout my life in different periods. But mm-hmm. since we're uh, highlighting Shevolution right now, I'll tell you that my moment of epiphany for this particular project and mm-hmm. the moment where it really hit me that, you know, it was like tears streaming. I knew exactly where I was driving. I was driving in a car <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and um, I, I knew exactly the moment. And I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So. Um, Like I said, you know, this is autobiographical based on my experience being married to a bipolar person who, Mm. who, you know, he totally fell off, you know, the edge of the earth, sad, sadly. Mm. Yeah. Um, And anyway, so I was Mm. having a hard time. I was trying to leave my house where we had seven dogs and three yeah. cats. I didn't know where to take care of them. I was trying to run away from the situation at home just for my own safety because he wasn't safe and all that stuff. So I was dealing with all this sort of drama mm-hmm. happening. And um, and then I was working on a TV show called SWAT mm-hmm. um, uh, that, yeah, I was working as a script ad- advisor. Oh. And... And yeah, I, I do all sorts of things, if you oh. haven't noticed yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was driving, you know, this was going on in my life. And and I had that moment where I was like, what has happened to me? You know, mm-hmm. I, I, went to, I went to film school for college. Mm-hmm. I majored in screenwriting. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to make films. Like yeah. ever since I was young, I, I was born and raised in the Philippines. Ever since I was in the Philippines, I wanted to make films, you know, and um, and then I became an actor before, um, you know, like right after college, I just sort of became an actor. And instead of pursuing uh, making movies, mm-hmm. I was in front of the camera. So, you know, it's great. Um, but screenwriting was really my passion and and making movies and directing and the whole thing about filmmaking was my thing and um and I haven't done that since since I graduated from college really and I mean I I have done short films primarily as an actor not Mm -hmm. as a filmmaker um and you know, I, I was just like, I had that moment of like, what is happening in my life? Like, I really want to go back to who I was, right. you know, where my passions lie and everything. And so I went, I went to the, to set and I, I had a breakdown moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so, it was such a bad day. Like during the break, I was, sitting next to the producer and I just started bawling and she was <sighs> like what's happening to you oh, and I, I I was just like you know all these things were happening in my life and I sit here and I'm watching everyone like you know shooting and I just got so like affected by how much I love 
you know, the the working and, and, and filmmaking, all the crew working together and the team, like it just so brings me so much joy. Yeah. And and she was like, so you should probably make a project. And I was like, I can't do it. Mm. this stuff. A lot of crazy things are going on in my life. And she was like, this is the best time you have yeah. to do it. And so she was like, just write a script, write a short film, write whatever you want about what's going on in your life right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that was the day that I went home and I started, I started writing. I finished the first draft in three days. Like it was like, you know, complete lightning bolt moment. Yeah. But I knew this was something I had to, to do yeah. um, in order to save my sanity. Mm. Just had to yeah. kind of get it all out there. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Uh, it's, it really is amazing just how, you know, like when you get that sort of inspiration, that sort of strong, will to get it down like i mean your fingers are just flying across the keyboard you just can't stop it and you yeah. and you don't want to stop it until until it's done and it becomes something so wonderfully cathartic when it when yes. you're able to do that yeah and it so, it, it reminded me that mm -hmm. this is this is why i wanted to be in this business in the first place was to yeah. express myself creatively and mm -hmm. artistically yeah yeah now, is that something that you've always had within you, like that that drive to entertain, to to be creative? Yes, yes, I'm a I'm a sucker for inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, I <laughs> you know I'm like an inspiration chaser. Yeah. Um. So, yes, I think that's what life is about. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, when there is something that, that, yeah. And I think that's what, you know, that's what brings us joy. That brings us catharsis. That's what, like, you know, makes us feel alive mm -hmm. um, is being inspired by whatever, you know, like, yeah, like walking down the street and seeing a beautiful flower and, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, whatever it is, that's why I do all sorts of different things because all sorts of different things inspire me. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely know what you mean there. So you said before that you were also um, were in LA just to be an actress as well, correct? Yes. I moved, I was born and raised in the Philippines and mm -hmm. then I moved to Los Angeles to go to college primarily, mm -hmm. but somehow I got into the acting business and mm -hmm. loved it and did a lot of theater so yeah I you know I love acting too and it's so much more it's so much more active and so much more physical than writing so yeah. oh yeah um so in a way it's a bit more fun yeah and there's also yeah. there's also a discipline attached to that as well like I mean every every writer needs to get into that real good rhythm to be able to commit themselves to writing every single day it's the only way that they're actually going to improve as a writer. And with acting, it's the same thing. Like you have to constantly be on top of your game when you're out there, especially in the theater. You know, you have always, you know, you know, it's not just, it's not just enough to know your lines that one time and that's it. You got to know it every night that you're out there performing. So that's, that's terrific that you were able to start off with that sort of training. Yes, I actually, um, Right after college, I went to grad school in New York at the Actors Studio. Oh, nice. And I'm really, really grateful for that mm -hmm. training. Yeah. Um, it's primarily method acting, mm -hmm. which I'm so, I am so grateful for that because it really teaches what I got was yeah. um, the discipline Mm -hmm. how to put myself, what to do to warm up, what to do, you know, exercising my imaginations, honing it and, and making it a part of your daily life. Um, and so, you know, I, I was really glad that I was able to get those tools Yeah. Um, from there. Excellent. For sure. And it, it really, really helps with the writing too. Um, yeah, I think it's very complimentary acting and 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 writing. Um, it really just 
for me, it really works together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause you, you want to, it's not just, it's not just enough to be able to like write down the words and everything. You got to know if they can be said and said with some form of gravitas, you know, like that's exactly it's, it's like, it's very much like what, uh, what Harrison Ford, you know, said to George Lucas saying, you can, you can print this, but you can't say it. And so <laughs> he was, he was a little bit more critical, I would say, than, uh, than, than quite those words, you know, that, uh, you know, um, when he actually used them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, as someone who has been, you know, like an actor and an author and everything, it's, I totally get it. You know, you definitely want to be able to present dialogue that you know, that you can trust that your actors can do something with. Yeah, and it can be authentic and believable, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. that's that that that's really important. And I'm a big believer in improv. Mm -hmm. So, um, so even as an actor, you know, like I still have to have like actors read mm -hmm. the script yeah. because yeah, there are still things that you know, like. I, makes sense when you write it down but mm -hmm. when it is said it's like no no nobody says yeah. it like that <laughs> mm -hmm. yep yeah you just kind of need to hear it out loud yeah and all of a sudden you're just saying like oh wow that is so not that that, that doesn't work at all like the rhythm is off like everything is just off and so yeah. have you know having that sort of training definitely definitely helps so um since you said that you would uh, you had worked on you worked in theater for for a period of time, was there a uh, a specific role that you got to play where you just thought like, wow, I love what I do here? Um, in theater or mm -hmm. in? Well, oh. we'll say we'll say in theater. You know, like that. In theater, yeah. Um, I, there's been several, but the first one that comes to mind is um, I I did this play called dog eaters mm -hmm. at the Kirk Douglas theater um, here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's about, it was based on a novel called also called dog eaters. And mm -hmm. it is a historical fiction about uh, the Philippines during the eighties, mm -hmm. um, okay. during the Marcos era. Mm -hmm. Um where the, you know, it was, it, I mean, it's the Philippines is still a tumultuous country, but yeah. it, um, martial law and stuff like that started back then in the 80s. And I got to play, I mean, she was a very tragic sort of character. Mm -hmm. um, I got to play this character named Lolita Luna, who was a, uh, she was kind of a, not like a porn actress, but what do you call it? Like a soft core porn. Soft core? Okay. Yeah, but she was also very, kind of. um, she was based on a real actress in the Philippines at that time. She mm -hmm. was also like, you know, like sort of a movie star, but she was also very exploited, um, mm. uh, like in the business and, and in by men you know very powerful mm. men in the government in the Philippines yeah. at that time and she was just so lost and and tragic mm. and you know and and but the most important part was that I got to work with my favorite author and playwright Jessica mm. Hagedorn who wrote the book and so you know being being from the Philippines and coming to America Mm -hmm. and studying Asian American literature I I was a big fan of Jessica Hagedorn because mm -hmm. she was like the <laughs> the Filipina that sort of made it in in literary America yeah um so so it was nice we really you know we I she was the playwright and also and so we got to work together we got to party together um and so it was like a dream come true. And it was a big theater in Los Angeles. And I got to work with an all Filipino uh, cast and, and, and the other cast members of that show were still best friends to this day. Excellent. So, yeah, so it was, you know, 
not just the the role itself or the production itself, but the whole thing, you mm -hmm. know, the people that I met and um, yeah. Was, uh, was it that kind, was it that um, reading that script, was that one of the things that really kind of inspired you to start writing your own work? Yes. Yes, very much so. Because yeah. I, when I went went to college and I read Dog Eaters in Asian mm -hmm. American theater history class, mm -hmm. um, I, I, and and Jessica talked about her journey from the Philippines to the United States in that book and all of it. And I wanted to be a writer. I right. wanted to talk about my journey, you know, mm -hmm. my migration journey from the Philippines to the states and what it's like being. Uh, a Filipino American artist. Yeah. Um, and so she kind of opened the doors for me that I can do that too, you know? And she was mm -hmm. a performance artist back in the 70s. She wrote poems, she wrote songs. She was this kind of wild, crazy woman. And, and, um, <clears throat> and I was also a performer. So, you know, she was kind of like my, my hero in a way. Yeah. Um, and so she really opened the doors for me. And 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 I remember one talk that we had when she said, when I was like, you know, because I wrote a, a show, a one woman show where I played all the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and and I and she was like, well, why did you do that? Why, why are you playing all the characters? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, well, because it's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, yes, you're absolutely right. Because as the writer, you know the heart and soul of these characters more than anybody else. Yeah. And so that really stuck with me when she said that. So I was like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> she paved the way for me, for sure. Excellent. And that uh, that play that you you know just mentioned where you play, you know, the, diff the different characters, did that follow through to you actually doing that on stage? Or did you wind up tweaking it? I um that's so funny that you asked that question. I just realized I wrote two plays where I did it first. Mm -hmm. The first incarnation was I do it all the characters myself. Right. And then I made it into a bigger production where I only play one of the characters and other actors play the other ones. Nice. So yeah. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So so you real so you literally got to have it both ways. You got to see how it is as you originally intended where you were playing all the characters and then you got to take a take a step back and just say like well let's see how other people can interpret this now when they yeah. when when they came on when they, when the other actors came on board did they bring something ex extra to the characters that you never saw before yes you know i'm i'm half filipina so yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's really hard for me to to play the in that indigenous Filipinas, yeah. um, I can, and I can and speak it and I can do everything else. Mm -hmm. But those are who are really, who have an indigenous roots right. um, can definitely play it better because they're, you know, they're, they're the part. Mm -hmm. So, so definitely that. Uh, so during that time that you were studying in, in theater, being on, in these different shows, working with these really great people, what was the impetus that kind of got you into going into film and television? Before I actually went into the theater, I studied uh, film in college. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, want, I really wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, mm -hmm. And then sort of the theater world kind of swept swept me away. And, and I think it's a, it's a natural progression. Of course, mm -hmm. the theater is, it's not very lucrative. Mm -hmm. And you start getting older and you start wanting to have a life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, I still do theater and still miss the theater, especially now that it's all dark. Right. It's been dark for a year. So yeah. Sad. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely film and television because it has, it has a shelf life. Yeah. Um, you can refer back to it, especially with all the technology that we have now. 
mm-hmm. or you know you can you can always preserve your work while in theater it's the beauty and the tragedy of it it's fleeting you know yeah. it's live and so it happens only at that moment and no performance is ever the same Mm-hmm. You know, night after night, every performance is different. I mean, you know, you have it's similar, but you have a story yeah. and everything. But, you know, but yeah, so that's the beauty of it. But also, yeah, there's not much preservation of it. And the experience of, uh, of live theater mm-hmm. cannot be recaptured. Just yeah. being in the theater and watching live theater is very different from watching a play that has been videotaped right you know the yeah. energy like is mm-hmm. is very different so um i still love theater uh film and television is a whole different world and i think if i want to be more influential if i want to have more impact mm-hmm. um cuz i have very much have a lot of like activist things to say as a as a filmmaker right. and a writer and so if I want to reach more people, definitely film and television is the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know what you mean when it comes to, you know, like watching, watching a videotaped performance versus watching being there for the live performance. It's, it's, it's literally like walking without a tightrope when you go out there because you know, like anything can happen. And just like you said, every show finds a way to be different. Just, you know, just a little, little ways here and there. But that's what that's part of what makes it so exciting. You know, it's really yeah. it's really something special. And I really, really hope that uh, that this that the theaters can get back and, you know, hopefully it won't be won't be long before we can start ramping up productions again, because it is even though like over here in, in uh, St. Louis and everything, I yeah, I've been here for about 10 years, but I was in New York City for 17 years. Oh, wow. And it was, you know, it's gut wrenching knowing that all of Broadway is just shut down. It's so, it's it's haunting, really. And I really, really mm-hmm. hope that it that it finds a way to get back in there because the audience is definitely going to be there. They can't wait to get to get back up and running. And the same thing with everyone involved with the theater. So I'm just hoping for you know, for all this to come to an end soon. Obviously, as everyone is. Um, yeah. But well, I hope I submitted Shivalution to the St. Louis in- International Film Festival. So no kidding. Oh, awesome. yeah. So hopefully we can we can get there and visit. I've never been, so I'll definitely come and see you. If that fabulous, happens. fabulous. I mm-hmm. know that I know that festival too. You know, like if if it's the one that I'm thinking of, yeah. And then yeah. Um. So yeah, I hope that uh, hope that it goes in. Uh, considering all the different selections that you've that you've already gotten i mean that's it's just phenomenal like what you've been able to do with this um and it's and it's not even like fully out there yet so it's just like this is going to be wild to see how much further it can go um but um so during the time that you were you know involved in film and television and everything you were able to um get in touch with you know like more people like you were saying before how you were um, how you were looking for the right people to kind of collaborate with. Was that something that you've just kind of had in mind all along? Is, is this been kind of like your end game to get this story out there? I mean, for this particular project, yes. But, you know, it's more of an overall uh, dream mm-hmm. to work with people I, I love. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and that has always been a dream, you mm-hmm. know. Ever since I was in college, and I was like, "If only, like I, I used to say, if only I would have all the money in the world, I'll make independent movies, and mm-hmm. all my friends will have a job in it." <laughs> <laughs> and you were able to make that happen, you know. Like even without all the money in the world, you're able to make that a reality, which is that's great. You know, that's something that I. I've always really admired about, you know, like a lot of people that re- that find a way to just kind of get their get their voices out there and not just sit sit back and wait for someone to come to them and present an opportunity. You created an opportunity, not just for yourself, but for so many other people. And that really needs to be commended. Yes. And also I did I, I did it, you know, uh, partly for myself, too, because. 
Um, first of all, this story is not just my story. This is a story of a lot of other domestic violence survivors. Mm -hmm. um, so that there, there was a strong passion to put it out there. And secondly, and this ties into why I really want to work with artists that I love. You know, this is a brutal business. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, we are being treated as commodities for most of the time. And we most of the time we are usually just desperate for a job, mm -hmm. you know, and we go from an audition to audition and um, and it's just, you know, there's not and we are artists and we need respect and we need a good life and mm -hmm. and all of it. And waiting like I've been in those shoes where I'm just auditioning and you do the best you can and still you don't get the part and mm -hmm. all these things and it's just the nature of the beast you yeah. know um and so I think I wanted to make it a, a priority to produce that's why I wanted to be a producer and mm -hmm. want to be a you know for the rest of my life is to create projects that that give artists work that they love and they can do what they love to do and yeah and get paid for it get get paid you know their their correct rate for their talent and mm -hmm. be respected highly yeah. so um yeah there's it's it really sitting around is is a there's nobody's going to give you anything i've come to realize nobody's going to give you anything and if i sit around I'm just going to get depressed. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Um, and yeah, and I think, you know, it opens up doors for more friends and the world just becomes a happier place for everybody. So, yeah, yeah. that's fa that's fabulous. So with that in mind, are there during the during the making of of this one of Shevolution, have other projects kind of come to mind? Just saying like other stories that have uh, that have come to mind that you are committed to writing in the near future? Um, yes, there's there's a couple. Uh, Shevolution is actually, the, the, the plan is to make it a three-parter. Nice. Um, and like sort of make it a feature, but three short films comprising a feature. Mm. And so I'm working on the second installment. Um, and the second installment will pretty much... Uh, explore the issues of um mental illness mm. you know and um and this that struggle yeah so um because you know the she the first installment was from the perspective of the woman mm -hmm. um and so the second installment um it, it would be a different title um mm but it would be from the perspective of the abuser. Oh. Um, so, so we're like really exploring that. Um, Cause I think it's, it's that for me, that really needs to be explored because, because what happened was that my, my ex-husband who suffered from mental illness, he struggled with it. He didn't, he didn't want to do all the terrible things that he did. You right. know, he, his life was so difficult Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I just always sort, of, sort of want to put that out there. So, you know, as to contribute in the effort to like end the stigma on mental illness, that, mm -hmm. that mentally ill people are not bad people. They're right. sick, mm -hmm. you know, and they need our help. So yeah. that's what I'm focused on right now. And of course there are so many other stories that I, I mean, there's, um, I want to work on the women's anti-fascist movement um, that's happening all over the world for the Philippines. Nice. Um, so that would be a documentary. Mm -hmm. And and um, and I also have I have a couple of stories that I that I are in the back pocket that um, you'll hear about. You'll hear more about them when they they come. You know. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. And so, so what was it like working with um, when, when so you have this crew collected, you have a director that from what I see on Instagram, someone that you've admired for a very long time. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about her. 
and Sadie Lopez. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, she's really interesting. I yeah. I love her to death. Um, mm-hmm. So basically, she's kind of a first time director. Really? Like this is um, this is a, a project, but she has a lot of experience. She's a very successful actress. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a star in that Netflix show, Selena. Not playing Selena, but playing Selena's mother. Oh, um, yeah. So, and I've seen her, you know, I've seen her films and TV shows. Um, and I've met her on the set of Resurrection Boulevard mm-hmm. uh, years ago. Um, and so I've, I, I've known her, but my best friend, who's also in the movie, Ivan, mm-hmm. You, her and him and Sadie were best friends like from years ago. Yeah. So, um, so when I was looking for directors, you know, I talked to a couple of different directors. So Ivan mentioned Sadie, and I, I was like, okay, like I didn't even know she directed, right. but Ivan told me about like other things that she started directing that or this one film that she actually finished directing or it was in the can, but it never got finished edited. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me his experience with her on that project and how she's just an amazing person. And so she read the script and we met in Ivan's living room Mm -hmm. and she's a mother. She's a very nurturing soul. And so I told her, you know, like, I I am very sort of like picky, like, just let me know if you, you know, it's okay. Like if you don't, like, you don't care that much about this project, but she was very passionate about it. And, and she's really caring. And um, it's not just wanting to direct, but wanting to put this story out there in the right way. Right. And so, so I knew that she, she was the, the right director and um yeah yeah she's she's really amazing and she's a great director Mm -hmm. she really is and um and so I can't wait like we we already have a sort of like a little production company going you know oh really I produce and I write and and she directs and so we have a a really wonderful working relationship that's fabulous that's terrific so um so Tell me a little bit about the first day on the set where you're working with this director that um, and you have the you have this crew, you have this cast. They're bringing this incredibly personal project to life. What was that experience like knowing that you there's so much that you had to hand off to other people to kind of let them interpret all of this in their own way? Um. I I was super 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 excited and mm-hmm. nervous. Yep. Um, it was a. Uh, I was super excited because I knew like the DP I also trusted very well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a wonderful DP and and uh, is also very super helpful. So I was very excited with what you know what he's going to come, I, I trusted them already, yeah. you know, uh, when we went to set. So it was just, it was, it was a lot of preparation went through it, went, went to it. And so I was like, okay, this is just, this is fine. This is, this is good. And I'm glad we're, we're making it happen. You know, it was really, it was really nice. And, and the other actors that played the other parts, we were in the sound stage the first day. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, one was one of my best friends from grad school and the other one is another actress, good friend of mine. And mm-hmm. my roommates helped out as crew, you know, so um, it was it was just a joy. It, yeah. was, it was really fun. That's great. That's great. And so when all of this is said and done. At some point, you know, like when, when everything was all finished, it was a wrap, uh, you know, on production. You had it all edited together. What was your initial reaction to seeing the whole finished product out there? Um, the first cut, or you mean like seeing the first cut? Yeah, the yeah. first edited cut. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, it's that is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watching the very first cut yeah. is really hard because you know it's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. It's really rough and and all of that. Um, but I also I also knew that that was going to be rough. Mm -hmm. But um, with that in mind, I was very relieved that it yeah. actually turned out good. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes you don't know like i've worked in other projects before where you really like you're like this editor is great he's gonna do such a great job and then and then you get the work and it's not cut right or he's not calling you back and it's just not happening and right. you know you never know so so when i did get that i was like okay and there's great editor, Jeff Mizushima mm -hmm. is such a great, great editor, great communication, totally professional guy. Excellent. Um, so happy. And uh, we paid him so below his rate scale. He's such a great <laughs> filmmaker. Yeah. But like we basically, we really wanted him. So we talked him into it and he was like, okay, sure. And so... <laughs> So it was a relief, you know, to know that my vision was coming, that it's going to happen. Yeah. Because I've, I've worked in other things in the past, you know. I've I've written and produced other things in the past where you're just like, we're not even going to submit this to festivals. This really? Is, no. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it's really the building the team is everything. Building your yeah. team. Yeah. So you have that. So you have the final cut, the one that you were that I would assume immensely satisfied with. Am I correct? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we worked on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We worked on it. Sadie and I would have like like it was like a Senate debate on like, <laughs> should we cut these three seconds or not? Mm -hmm. What would make the most like it was we added it for a long time and we started editing in COVID. And so we're like, we have all the time in the world. Let's just talk about everything and make it exactly, you know, the way we want it. You yeah. know, where everyone's happy. Yeah. And just kind of making the best time. of a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. So once that is finished and then you decide to, you decide for, you know, to take the next step and get it out there and into the festivals, what was it, what was it like to get that first acceptance and which one was it um the the first official selection we got was the venice beach film festival nice which is pretty cool because it's local it's mm -hmm. right here and yeah you know um and so it was it was nice to get that the first the first wins were like what 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 just happened? <laughs> so, um, so when that happens, so you know, so this is one thing that I'm I'm really curious about. So this is this is a film festival, and um, obviously, you know, the movies are screened there and everything. But with with COVID being what it is and restricting so much travel, what was the situation there? Was everything just done via Zoom or something? Where you was where everyone was everyone sent to like links to all the different films so they can stream it themselves or what was it what was the whole what was the whole setup like with this okay that's a that's a very good question mm -hmm. <laughs> i think because everyone you know um this is a unprecedented situation also yeah. and not all thing because film festivals are based on you know location you right. go to the place and there's the you know the festival that's where it happens mm -hmm. um so they all had to turn everything online yeah. um, and it's different, different situations um, depending on what the festival has decided. Uh, there was one from Italy, Roma, mm -hmm. um, where you just kind of like, you send a little video, um, you know, thank you so much for selecting us. We can't go to Rome, but thank you so much. And they'll post the <laughs> video on their social media. That's and, cool. and then um, there's the Independent Shorts Awards where you win these awards and they just, you know, they give you certificates and um, they don't do like a live announcement. 
Oh, they okay. just kind of uh, email you and tell you that you won and and th these are prices. And if you want to, you know, like via email communication and social media primarily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Excellent. then there's also um, some festivals will have screenings like like at the end of this month, there'll be a week screening of She Evolution for the New York indie short festival yeah and so they'll screen it's like it's like you know if you go to a festival that happens in one week mm -hmm. but instead of actually going to the place in the movie theater everything is in a movie channel like oh. like there's a zerb tv z-e-r-b tv dot mm -hmm. tv um so it's like everyone is will just go in there and pay their ticket which i think is like a dollar ninety nine Mm -hmm. And then watch the movies, stream it online for one week, and people vote on mm -hmm. that platform. Excellent. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's that's a great way to to do it too. And just um, I'm wondering if with everything that uh, that's happened over this past year, how um, how so many different how so many different um, awards you know like awards productions or how they were forced to basically adapt to the situation i wonder how many of them are gonna keep this from then on and say like hey this is a good streamlined way to do it do you see that happening with uh, with some of these festivals yes i believe that that will it will be incorporated which mm -hmm. i think is great yeah it really is great because like you know not we can't go to all the festivals, especially the ones that are international. There's life that you have to take care of and all of that. And and so, you know, I, they found a way, like I think Sundance this year, making all their deals virtually. Yeah. Like the buying and the selling and distribution deals and all that. Mm -hmm. It's all done virtually. Yeah. So, um, so I think it's great that we have that and people who still want to go, you know, enjoy the actual festival can do that, mm -hmm. but it won't be limited to just that. Like, I think people are doing the, well, people are going to do the both thing. Like yeah. there's the virtual option and there's the um, live option. Right. Excellent. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm, that's one thing that really fascinates me about how everyone has been doing their part to kind of adapt to everything, um, what they're uh, what they're going to wind up doing in the future when everything just has a way of kind of somewhat going back to normal. Because we're obviously not going to go back to 2019 uh, situations, but we can at least go to, um, but we can at least you know try to come up with something that really kind of incorporates both kind of like a happy medium with everything. Um, yeah. So, uh, so what sort of advice do you have for those who are looking to kind of get into, into this business or trying to um, see about creating their own opportunities as well for, you know, like writing, for directing, for acting, whatever the case, what, uh, what advice would you have to really kind of get them on the right track? Trust yourself and your vision. Mm -hmm. and don't listen a lot of people will tell you all sorts of things but they are not you mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're not you know they they probably have different ways of, of making things happen for them so do what works best for you and you only know that you know um mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's all about trusting yourself and going with your own go with your best instincts yes exactly Excellent. Where can uh, where can my listeners find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram, where mm -hmm. George and I found each other. Yep. At Minerva Vier. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, it's Minerva Benedicto Vier. Mm -hmm. That's my full full name on Facebook, and I'm not really on Twitter. Yeah. So <laughs> those are the primary, the primary two. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Just like what uh, what Minerva had had done, by all means, you know, just make sure you're surrounding yourself with not the best people, but the right people that you can trust with your material that is going to get everything out there with you, not just for you, but with you, because 
this in this wonderful collaborative industry, the key word is collaboration. Everyone's got to is going to be bringing something to the table. And it really is just a wonderful feeling to have that group of people together and to be able to bring something that they can all contribute to and get it all out as one collective whole. That's what Minerva has done for Shevolution. That's what she is continuing to do to do for all of her other projects in the future. And I really, really hope that all of you have that trust in yourself to make that happen as well. So for Minerva Veer, this is George Soroy saying to all of you, Ever Upward, and I will see you next week. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. If you've never been an Audible customer and want to see what they offer, just go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs, download a title for free, and start listening. It's that easy. Why Audible? Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. And with this free 30-day trial, you'll have your pick of it all. You can hear books of all genres narrated by Jim Dale, Stephen Fry, Will Patton, Alex Hyde-White, Jeff Brick, Neil Shaw, William Demerit, and even a few by me, George Soroy. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and start your own 30-day journey with Audible today.